tonight. Influencing India. Political parties in India pull out all the stops to secure voter confidence. Their newest tactics attempting to charm the youth through content creators. On the brink. Chinese drills encircling Taiwan sets off panic within the island. China affirming there is no cause for unreasonable chaos. Time to vote. The UK prepares to head to the polls following a surprise announcement to hold elections in July. The opposition preparing for a close fight with Sana. And ready, set, sleep. Don't let their relaxed form fool you. These athletes are snoozing to the finish line. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ala Vedana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for taking the time to join us on World News this evening. We have a plethora of key stories to bring to you tonight from border tensions all the way to mounting riots. But we start off in neighbouring India with an update on the progressing elections. India's six-week-long election is still underway and the next round is due to take place this Saturday. But there are concerns that the blistering heat is going to have an impact on the turnout. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is widely expected to win a third term in office and his party is keen to court younger voters and in order to get their support, they have been turning to influencers. In New Delhi, a meeting of more than 1,000 people has been organised by Prime Minister Modi's party. These individuals gathered here are not the BJP workers, but social media influencers. In an attempt to influence the influencers, members of the party provide strict guidelines, instructing them on creating content that could bring Narendra Modi his third successive victory. The BJP is reaching out to influencers from all walks of life. This beauty influencer with around 25,000 Instagram followers is now creating content loaded with political undertone. This 30-year-old woman is voluntarily promoting the party, but many, like this young boy, are approached by politicians to convey their messages. Small influencers receive few euros for hours of work, but creators with millions of followers are paid up to 5,000 euros. BJP's media spokesperson says, these content creators help in shaping the opinions of people without firm ideology. In India, more than half of the population is under 30 and 80% own a smartphone. Realising this significance, political parties are betting on influencers in this election. Some mounting border tensions in our region tonight. China has launched two days of large-scale military drills surrounding Taiwan in what it called punishment for so-called separatist acts. Just days after the self-ruling island swore in a new democratically elected leader who called on Beijing to cease its intimidation tactics. Taiwan mobilized its military on Thursday and said it was confident it could protect the island. That's after China the same morning started two days of what its military called punishment drills around Taiwan, which it said were both a response to, quote, separatist acts of Taiwan independence forces, as well as a, quote, stern warning against the interference and provocation by external forces. The exercises come just days after Lai ching te took office as Taiwan's new president, a man Beijing detests as a separatist. China's military said the drills involving the Army, Navy, Air Force and Rocket Force are intended to test its forces, quote, joint real combat capabilities. Chinese state media said dozens of fighter jets carrying live missiles were sent out, along with warships, and conducted mock strikes on high-value military targets. They published a map of the drill zones in five areas all around Taiwan and the islands Taiwan controls near the Chinese coast. Taiwanese officials told those areas were outside its contiguous zone, which is 24 nautical miles from the main island's coast. Taiwan's defense ministry said that it had dispatched forces to areas around the island, and the presidential office condemned what it called China's unilateral military provocations. Lai has repeatedly offered talks with China, but been rebuffed. He rejects Beijing's sovereignty claims over the island and says only Taiwan's people can decide their future. China last staged large-scale war games near Taiwan in 2022 and 2023. It again ramped up military pressure on the island in the lead-up to Lai's inauguration, with fighter jets staging mock attacks on foreign vessels while ships and planes encroached close to the island. Unlike similar exercises conducted in the past, 
China's military has classified this latest round of drills in a way that leaves room for potential follow-ups. And now an update on Iran. The coffin carrying the body of late Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi arrived in Mashhad together with two other victims of the helicopter crash ahead of a burial ceremony. Today's ceremonies follow a funeral prayer led by Iran's supreme leader in Tehran, attended by 40 foreign dignitaries, including officials from Iraq, Pakistan, Qatar, Turkey, Egypt, Tunisia, Kuwait, Russia, China, Armenia and also Azerbaijan. Raisi and Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Dobalan and six other passengers and crew were killed in a helicopter crash in Iran on Sunday. And we're in the UK now with some surprising news. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunna called a national election for July 4th, saying Brighton's would be able to choose their future in a vote his Conservatives are widely expected to lose to the opposition Labour Party after 14 years in power. Ending months of speculation as to when he would call a new vote, Sunak stood outside his Downing Street office in pouring rain and announced he was calling the election earlier than expected. A risky strategy with his party far behind Labour in the opinion polls. For more updates on the ground, we have other than a world news special correspondent Clifford Perel from Yorkshire in the UK. Clifford, what do you have for us? Dear Samradi, all must shortly be heard above an anthem associated with the Labour Party played by protesters just outside the gates Downing Street. Sunak listed what he said were his achievements in government, not only as Prime Minister but also as a former finance minister. Now is the moment for Britain to choose its future, he said describing that choice as one between stability with him and unknown with Labour leader K.S. Starmer. Sunak heads into election not only far behind the Labour Party in the polls, but also someone isolated from some in his party, increasingly dependent on a small team of advisers to steer him through what is said to be an ugly campaign. But he seems to have decided with some economic gains, such as inflation falling and the economy growing at its fastest pace in almost three years. Now was the time to take a risk and present his agenda for a new term, formally to waters. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you very much for the update. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Clifford Pereira from Yorkshire in the UK. Over on the Israel-Palestine conflict, Israeli forces carried out raids in the West Bank city of Jenin for a second straight day, with at least 10 Palestinians killed in the fighting. Smoke billowed over the city's refugee camp in the afternoon with explosions and gunfire heard from inside, while soldiers in Israeli armored vehicles fired at masked youths in the city center. Plumes of smoke slowly rose over Janine as the Israeli army raided the West Bank city for a second day in a row. Below, armored vehicles patrolled the nearly empty streets. The constant buzz of Israeli drones, only interrupted by the deafening sound of gunfire. The IDF said it was carrying out a counter-terrorism operation in Jenin when its forces clashed with masked gunmen on Tuesday. The fighting continued on Wednesday with heavy gunfire battles in the city center. Local authorities said at least 11 people were killed, including four children. The IDF regularly carries out raids on Jenin, which it sees as a stronghold for Palestinian militant groups. The incursions are often preceded by military bulldozers used to destroy roads and vital infrastructure. Violence in the West Bank has surged since Israel's invasion of Gaza, killing more than 500 people in the past seven months, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. We're going in for a short commercial break now. More world news on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. An update now on the chaos in New Caledonia. French President Emmanuel Macron said that he believed dialogue was necessary during a hastily arranged visit to the region in unrest today after deadly riots triggered by a contested electoral reform hit the Pacific Island. French President Emmanuel Macron is visiting New Caledonia to try and stop the riots that have been devastating the remote overseas territory for more than a week. Chaos broke out after the French government began debating changes to the voting system in the Pacific Ocean island. Opponents say the measure benefits pro-France politicians 
and marginalizes the local Kanak population, who once suffered from strict segregation policies. Six people have been killed, including two policemen, and hundreds have been injured in the clashes. The local airport has been closed for commercial flights, and France imposed a curfew and deployed an additional thousand security personnel to try and bring the situation under control. Meanwhile, Australia and New Zealand are flying back to their home countries dozens of citizens. The French government said Prime Minister Gabriel Attal should also be traveling to the island in the coming weeks. I personally believe that the state of emergency should not be extended because, as I told you, I deeply believe that dialogue is necessary. But I appeal to the responsibility of all the leaders who are here today because it will only be lifted if everyone, in their own responsibility, calls for the roadblocks to be lifted. In the coming hours and days, massive new operations will be scheduled where necessary, and Republican order in its entirety will be re-established, because there is no other choice. The Russia-Ukraine conflict continues to worsen. The Russian-installed head of East Ukraine's Donetsk region said in a statement posted on the Telegram messaging app that a civilian got wounded and several houses and cars were damaged after Ukraine shelled a town of Makwika. Scenes of destruction after another Russian strike hit the Kharkiv city center on Wednesday. Several people were injured in the strike, which landed in a densely populated residential area. Local authorities said the missiles were likely fired and operated from within Russia's territory. In the past weeks, Russia has launched a fresh offensive on the Kharkiv region, with the city and surrounding villages targeted by near-daily attacks, mostly against civilian and energy infrastructure. On Wednesday, Vladimir Zelensky issued a fresh plea for upgraded defense systems to protect against Moscow's aggression. Kyiv is awaiting deliveries of crucial military aid and weapons from its Western allies. The U.S. Congress last month approved a $60 billion package for Ukraine after blocking the aid for half a year, a delay which analysts say may have handed Moscow the initiative in the war. The weather is causing chaos in multiple regions across the globe, specifically in the United States' as Midwest region, which has been hit by multiple tornadoes. Search and rescue efforts are still ongoing in Iowa, where the city of Greenfield has reported several fatalities. Over the past 30 hours, tornadoes have been reported in Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma and Wisconsin, while major damage was seen in Iowa, with at least 18 tornadoes reported in the state. In Greenfield, Iowa police said at a news briefing on Tuesday evening that they have confirmed fatalities but were unable to say exactly how many. Off, so Iowa State Patrol Sergeant Alex Dinkler said regarding the death toll that we're still counting at this time while telling the reporters a good portion of Greenfield has been destroyed. Videos show devastation and severe damage to infrastructure as tornadoes flattened buildings and overturned cars. Greenfield saw at least an EF3 level tornado, which is a category for wind speeds of up to 265 kilometers per hour. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds declared a disaster emergency for 15 counties in the state, saying that it will provide its full resources to help the residents. And on the road to the White House tonight, a verdict in Donald Trump's hush money case, the first ever criminal trial of a former U.S. president, could come soon. And polls suggest one in four Republicans would not vote for him if he's found guilty, while an acquittal would be a massive victory for Trump. A verdict in Donald Trump's hush money case could come within days. No matter the outcome, it could reverberate into the 2024 election. Here's how it could play out. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records to cover up a payment that bought the silence of porn star Stormy Daniels shortly before the 2016 election. The New York case is the first ever criminal trial of a former U.S. president. And I gotta get back on the campaign trail. 
I'm not supposed to be here. And likely the only case Trump will face before the November 5th election against Democratic President Joe Biden. In an election that could be decided in a handful of battleground states, even a small number of Republicans and independents turned off by a guilty verdict could help Biden, according to one Republican pollster. On the other hand, Trump and his allies could frame it as a political hit job. This is a trial that should have never happened. This is a case that should have never been filed. An acquittal would be a huge victory for Trump, according to experts across the political spectrum. On the campaign trail, he could claim the other charges against him have no legal merit. He's accused of trying to overturn his 2020 loss in Washington and Georgia and is facing charges in Florida over mishandling classified documents. He's pleaded not guilty in those cases, too. I got indicted four times in a period of about three seconds. While his core supporters would feel vindicated and validated, a Democratic consultant said some suburban women may be turned off by the lurid details that came out in New York. If the 12 jurors cannot agree on a unanimous verdict, the result will be a hung jury. Legal experts say the judge would have to declare a mistrial and that Trump would likely spin that as a victory. Still, a mistrial would tell voters that at least some jurors believe Trump was guilty. Moving on to the medical dispute in South Korea, the government says that they are willing to hold talks in any form and whenever with the doctors, but without any unrealistic conditions. This comes as one of the country's largest doctors groups expressed a willingness to engage in conversation with the government. While the South Korean government and the medical community agree that communication is necessary, the ongoing rift continues as both sides remain at an impasse. The Korean Medical Association, along with other doctor organizations as well as medical school professors, held a closed-door meeting on Wednesday afternoon to discuss the ongoing medical dispute. Junior doctors, however, did not participate. While the exact details of the meeting have not been revealed, the KMA spokesperson said that they are ready to engage in talks with the government. The second vice health minister, Park min -soo, responded by saying that the government is also willing to engage in talks, but stressed that the government is unable to accept what he called unrealistic conditions set forth by the medical community, which include the complete re-evaluation of the admission quota plan. A willingness to engage in talks whenever as long as the medical community presents a reasonable and unified plan was echoed by Prime Minister Han dok -soo in a meeting held earlier in the afternoon. But it remains unclear whether this recent development will lead to a breakthrough because as of Monday, only 5.1 percent of the total junior doctors in the nation returned to work, despite it marking three months since their absence began. Under the relevant law, junior doctors are only allowed up to three months off to qualify for the specialty certification exam the following year. Prime Minister Han also said that 16 out of the 32 medical schools have completed amendments to their medical school admission plans for next year, with the government also pledging to work closely with the remaining schools. The Korean Council for University Education will hold a university admissions committee meeting this week where it will review and approve the amendments submitted and announce the new admission guidelines next week. And to address the ongoing shortage of doctors at hospitals, the prime minister also pledged to dispatch 120 more doctors from military hospitals starting Thursday, in addition to the 427 military and public health doctors that have already been deployed. Let's go in for a short commercial break. We'll be right back with more World News. Welcome back. Sleep is something that is essential for the human condition, needless to say. But oftentimes we see sleep being over or under applied. So there's always a debate on exactly how much sleep is ideal for each individual. But to these special athletes, sleep is a sport. Now this is a competition we can get behind. South Koreans gathered over the weekend in Seoul to battle in a power nap contest. The rules were simple. Wear something comfortable, get comfy, and sleep for one hour and 30 minutes. A dream scenario. 
Each contestant had their heart rate monitored to determine the winner. But hey, getting a nap in the middle of the day makes them all winners. To make the competition a little tougher, contestants were distracted by feather tickling, whispering, and mosquito noises. Some were better at ignoring distractions than others. In addition to judging their sleep, they also determined who was the best dressed while sleeping. The event was held to raise awareness about how important it is to get proper rest. South Korea's National Assembly said the country had the lowest average of sleep out of all OECD nations. South Koreans average about 7 hours and 41 minutes of sleep. The overall average is 8 hours and 22 minutes. I feel like this is a competition that no one would really pass out on, if you understand. Imagine being cheered for taking a nap. Well, that's all the stories we have to report to you tonight on World News. Tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.